You're in New York City, huh? New York City. Yeah, we just got off stage here at the Inman Conference. A lot of fun. We had a lot of fun today. But I'm curious, man. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, ready for 2024, man. I put my head down for the last couple of years. been grinding, working harder than I ever have, and some real big goals this year. Uh, what are some of those goals, if you don't mind sharing? Yeah, I mean, well, man, so many of them. So, you know, obviously in the TV world, we have season two of Flipping El Moose's coming out. Uh, if you were to ask me, it's hands down the best season of TV I have ever done. The houses are phenomenal. Um, the storylines are, they're, they're awesome. And this is the season like flipping, uh, the flipping on Musa season two is awesome. We we're going into a very exciting development deal for my company, TEM capital. Uh, we just recently bought 376 units, Northwest Arkansas, 215 units, Orlando, uh, developing 925 units in surprise, Arizona, uh, uh, surprise, Arizona. But we just announced our newest development. It's in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It's a 39-story luxury high-rise. So this is like a dream project for me because I started out flipping $100,000 condos. Um, you know, and outside of that, continue growing homeschool, teach more people how to how to better their life through real estate, flip more houses, build wealth, buy rentals, and then of course, target buys houses. My original house flipping company. We're we're scaling into new states this year, and and we're looking to to really increase that business. First question for all of this. Do you ever feel overwhelmed? You got a lot going on. I'm sitting here listening to all these goals and I'm like, shit, I'm overwhelmed for you. You know, to tell you the truth, um, I'm absolutely overwhelmed. Okay. Like completely overwhelmed. I typically start my day uh, like 3, 3.30 in the morning and I'll, I'll typically end my day, you know, around eight o'clock at night, right? When it comes to work and stuff like that. And if I have the kids, you know, obviously I'll spend time with the kids, but I am absolutely overwhelmed. Um, a couple of years ago, I decided to start some new businesses all at the same time. Mm. And, and now I got to I got to follow through with my words. So I'm working harder than I have ever worked in my life to make these things happen. But I'm, I'm doing well, considering the overwhelm, I'm energetic, I'm positive, I'm excited. And, I, and I'm really looking forward to the future. What do you do to not let that overwhelm block you or stop you from pursuing these things, right? Because it's very easy for, for many people. I mean, uh, our community is high-performing millennials. Like, they want the most out of life. They want those big goals like you have. But when the overwhelm strikes, it's like, whoa, you know, we're just frozen in our tracks. How do you avoid that from happening? You got to unfreeze. Bottom line, if you're overwhelmed, you're feeling stuck, the last thing you do is shut down. What you need to do is the opposite. You need to get going. You need to take action. You need to get moving. You always have to be moving because the second you sit there frozen, time stops. And then you get stuck in the cycle of thinking about the present or thinking about the past. And then you start forgetting what you're building and what you're working towards. So as long as you're always obsessing about your vision and that life that you want and those big dreams and goals, and you're willing to put in the work to go chase them, you know, you can overcome that overwhelm. Yeah, for sure. I, I really appreciate that. Um, knowing that you have these big goals, I'm curious how you have your strategy, your mindset, whatever it may be to not let the quote unquote flops uh, to tie in the book here. How do you not let the flops of the past determine your future? Well, with, without a flop, you can't get a flip. I mean, I don't know of one professional sports team that's never lost a game, right? And that's and that's what that's what makes the difference between winners and losers. You know, when you lose, you learn from it. You don't quit. You don't cry. You don't complain. You learn from it. So the most valuable lessons I received in my life is through loss, is through pain, is through challenge, because it teaches you to figure out how to get out of it. Yeah. So do you think it's crucial for us? It sounds like the answer is yes, but I just want to make sure I'm getting clear here. Is it crucial for us to fail to be able to succeed? Bottom line is this. Even if you don't want to fail to succeed, you have to fail to succeed because it's impossible to find success without failing over and over and over again because failure is trial and error. The more you fail, the more you know what does not work, which frees up time to go out there and find what does work. Yeah. Have you ever found yourself in a situation, and I know I'm guilty of this for probably the last five years of life, but... Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you were failing and essentially dragged that failure out to 
an extent where you're like up against the wall and you're like, Hey, like nothing's changing. Like, have you ever been in a situation like where you just didn't want to fail or like let go of the project? Um, you know, honestly, when it comes to, to work, I've never been in that situation, but in my, my personal life, you know, I have. Yeah. Yeah. How do you navigate that? Well, you know, through, through a lot of, a lot of hard learned lessons, yeah. you know, through, I always say we grow through pain. And one of the things I never really did in my life was take care of my, my personal life. And I was always so business focused, uh, goal focused, dream focused that I forgot about me. I forgot about my health. I forgot about my mental health. I forgot about my happiness. And for a long time, I really beat the, the, the crap out of myself. Uh, but, you know, hitting rock bottom in 2016 and 17, you know, gave me a chance to, to really figure out who, who I am, who I want to be, and it gave me hope that I can rebuild my life. Yeah. I mean, from a man to man perspective, I'm curious, why do you feel like you put yourself on the back burner? Uh, well, I was so focused on my business goals. Hmm. That's it. You know, if you look at me years ago, I'm overweight. I'm dressed like crap. I'm drinking. I'm smoking cigarettes. I'm stressed out of my mind. I'm not sleeping because I didn't care about me. All I cared about was, was reaching these goals I had. Unfortunately, um, it, it took a big toll on me. In that you know, moment, and, did you not have a fear of like any of the repercussions that can come about from that? Like, were you numb to that completely? Y yeah. You, like a lot of times when you're in it, you don't even know you're in it. And that's 2020 hindsight. You look back at a situation you're like, wow, that was wrong or wow, that was bad. Right. But when you're in it, a lot of times things are moving so fast, you don't even see it. That's yeah. why it's really important to to take care of your mental health, your mental health, your physical health, your financial health. Where me, all I focused on was my financial health and I let everything else go in the toilet. Yeah. I asked this question a couple times on the show. I mean, we're 300 plus episodes into this podcasting journey, but uh, I think I might've asked this question like two or three times in the past. I'm curious from your perspective, like knowing where you were previously, not taking care of the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, the physical health. If you were to go back and start that journey over, which aspect of health would you take care of first? Mental 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 because mental health controls all the other health okay. if your mental health isn't right you're not going to eat right if your mental health isn't right you're not going to get your ass up and go to the gym mm -hmm. right if it all starts with your mental health and if the second you can work on your mental health the rest of your life starts to transform because you get that energy that excitement that drive that motivation that passion but if you're beating yourself up every day, what is going to get you to get off the couch and go run or go lift weights? Nothing, because inside you're hurting. Yeah. So the number one thing is to fix the inner pain. Yeah. What did you do to fix the inner pain? Was it therapy? Was it something along those lines, like inner child work, anything in particular? I, I flipped my life <laughs> like, yeah. like, no, like no bullshit, like from from zero living in a halfway house with a roommate with rules. So today, speaking to you, I completely transformed my life, my mindset, my mental health, my physical health, the way I think about life, the way I think about my friends, my family. I've, I've completely rebuilt who I am. And it was a very challenging process, but it all starts with the very first step. And most people don't understand that change, it can be difficult, but the, the hardest part of change is day one, because most people, they don't have the courage to just get started. And then what happens is once you get started on something, it doesn't matter what it is, it's going to be painful the first couple of weeks, but then it becomes a part of who you are. And next, you know, you're doing these things that are amazing for you and they're not even bothering you. And they're not, you're not even, you're not even annoyed by them. And next thing you know, you're excited about them. I get excited to eat healthy food. Now I get excited to wake up at the crack of dawn to go to the gym. The first month I'm like, hell no, driving in the dark. I'm lazy. I'm out of breath. <laughs> But now I see veins coming out. I, I wear my whoop watch. My heart rate's down. I can see my health improving. And, and, and we love to see results, right? So, you know, everybody said that the four-minute mile was impossible, right? Until somebody did it. Now they do it every day, right? So people, they just got to get started. Yeah. Dude, you look awesome. Like, you really Thank do. You. I, I was Thank just, like, on the Instagram scrolling through, seeing if there's anything that you posted. But, like... You really look fantastic, man. Like that transformation is incredible. Been working. And you know what? And, and it all started with the inside. Yeah. I, I guess I shouldn't recommend a, a New York City pizza spot that not many people know about. <laughs> no, I should, I'll go there. It is New York City. 
<laughs> I love it. Um, I want to touch on the mental health side of things, specifically for men, right? We're, we're, we're two men talking here. A lot of men from a stereotypical perspective are you know, taught to do the opposite of what you're sharing right now. And I very much so resonate with what you're sharing. Your life changes when you really turn inward. I, I could agree with that. What's your advice to someone, a male, maybe even a female, because it happens to them too, right? It, it happens across the board to build up that courage and to turn inward and forget about what we've been taught condition wise in regards to tapping into ourselves. Yeah. I, I mean, at, at the end of the day, you got to look in the mirror and take full responsibility for every single thing in your life. And let me give you an example. I was not the best father. It hurts me to say that, but today I'm best friends with my babies, but I was not the best father. The first couple of years I was working all the time. I wasn't very connected with my daughter. And I just, it beat me up. I felt so bad all the time. I'm not a good dad. My, my kid doesn't like me, blah, blah, blah. And you know what I realized years later, all I had to do was spend 30 minutes a day with my daughter, literally one-on-one, -on -one, no phone, no distractions, put in the work. And the day my ex-wife left me was the day I started putting in the work. And my daughter, who I barely knew when she was very young, became my best friend. So to anyone out there that's going through shit, the only way you're going to get out of it is if you get to work, spend the time with that person, read that book, you know, you should read, go on that walk, you know, you should go on, start doing what you know you need to do, because we all have two voices. We have the voice I'm talking to you right now, right? And then we have this other sucker in the back of our head, back of our mind, right? Where I'm going to go to the gym today. And this guy, I don't go to the gym. You woke up late, blah, 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 long, right? You got you to gotta quiet that voice and make the one that actually speaks to the world that much louder. How do you quiet that voice? By proving to, by proving to yourself over and over again, you can accomplish what you say you're going to accomplish. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. That voice can get loud. That voice can get yeah. really, really loud at times. Um, from your experience, I'm curious to learn if you feel like individuals need to have the two by four in the face type of moment in life to make change, or if we can make change without experiencing that rock bottom point. Absolutely. Most people, they don't change until something drastic happens. Yeah. A sickness, a death, a big loss, a divorce. But the truth is we can eliminate all of that pain before it ever arrives. Mm. If we just put in the work, and do the things we're supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. You were talking about pain earlier and saying how you've learned so much from past pains. What does that process look like for you? Is it a self-reflection? Is it working with someone one-on-one? -on -one? Like, how do we ensure that we learn from these things as opposed to going through life on autopilot, numb per se, and really missing the lessons and continuously repeating them? Yeah, you know, I mean, with, with, with pain, I'll give you an example. And I was a 24-year-old kid. If, if I had an escrow fall out, I'd cry. My life's over. What, I'm, what am I going to do, right? And now I can lose a half million dollars on a deal. Is that painful? Yeah, a little bit. But is it anything compared to surviving two cancers? No. Is it anything like going through a public divorce? No. So I've had such great pain in my life that the pain I sometimes get doesn't compare to the pain I've endured. Therefore, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. I like what you said. It's essentially like you've eliminated an attachment <clears throat> to outcome. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. How do we do that? And I was just talking about this last night. So it's funny you bring this up. Yeah. I mean, everybody's, you know, I, I love winning, right? I, I love winning, but I don't, I don't, I don't focus on the winning, right? Mm -hmm. There's one thing we need to do try our hardest every single day. I see my students, I see people all around me for years. How do I do this? How do I do that? Wondering, thinking, waiting, and nothing ever happens because instead of thinking and wondering and waiting, they didn't go read the book. They didn't pick the healthier meal. They didn't go exercise. Everybody knows what we need to do. That's the interesting thing about life. We all know what we need to do, yet we still wonder what do we do, Yeah, right? We all know. 
Yeah, we'll we'll let's transition to the book, Flip Your Life, How to Find Opportunity in Distress. Right? The the new book on the way. We talked about how the flops of life lead to success and it's an essential part of the journey without a doubt. When someone picks up this book, which by the way, to everyone that's tuned into this, the link to the book is in the show notes of this episode. If people could only take one thing away from this book, what do you want that one thing to be? Hope. 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 I believe any person that reads my book, it doesn't matter what situation they're in. It doesn't matter how bad it is. I believe by the time they get to the final page of my book, they're going to have the hope they need to take that first step in flipping their life. Hmm. So it's a, it, you're, you're saying hope as in it's possible for you as well. Yeah. Cause most people, they don't think it's possible because they can't think that big. They can't dream that big because our whole lives we're told, sit down, be still, wait your turn. Don't ask questions. I say bullshit to all of that. Every single thing we were taught about life is wrong. Mm -hmm. Don't wait in line. Ask the questions. Go out there, chase your dreams. If you want something, grab by the bull by the horns and go get it, which is opposite of how we're, we're taught to live. Yeah, yeah. How do you help someone move through the discomfort of do, you know doing something we've done for years upon years of our life, which is live the complete opposite way of that versus making that transition, right? It's uncomfortable at times to just do something new, put ourselves in new environments, go after it. What's your advice for dealing with the discomfort that's going to come about from putting forth that type of effort? Sure. I'll give you an example right now. I, I transformed my, my physical life over the last few years, working out like crazy. When I first started going to the gym, it was so early. I hated the cardio. I hated the lifting yeah. weights. I felt uncomfortable. There's all these buff people around me, people in shape. I was quiet, right? A month later, I now have friends at the gym, right? Mm -hmm. Six weeks in, I now see results. I'm in the morning going early because I want to do extra cardio because I want to look even better. And now I go to the gym. My buddies are there. My friends are there. It's a community. We, we motivate each other. So, so what does all this come back to? This all comes back to getting started, mm -hmm. just getting started. And it's always more painful at the beginning, but that pain eventually turns into excitement and purpose. Yeah. I'll give you an example, cold calling sellers. Oh my God, it was painful. F you Tarek, screw yourself Tarek, blah, blah, blah. That pain turned into hundreds of thousands of dollars. That pain made it possible for me to buy a house. Mm -hmm. So turn that pain into purpose. You just brought up that question that I had lost, and this is why I love podcasting. Coming coming back full circle here, you were talking about making sure that we were putting our best effort forth, right? That's what we were talking about before when we were discussing attachment to outcome. What if we want to be rewarded for our best effort? So for example, like going to the gym, you're, you know, what you were just alluding to, like you're not going to come out of the gym the first day and have a six pack. Like that's just not how this thing works. So what happens if we're going through life where, um, you know, pursuing a project, we're putting that best effort forth and we're not necessarily seeing the result, right? Like how do we continuously show up in that regard? Uh, acceptance. So here's what most people do. They're going to do something new. They set a goal. And in a few months, I'm going to have a six pack or I'm going to make a million dollars. Right. And then, eh, and then it doesn't happen. And then, oh, it falls off and they quit wrong. You need to change who you are. You need to have a different lifestyle. So you have to accept the fact that you're somebody that every day does the same things, whether you want to or not. If you're, if you're a, a house flipper, every day you got to look for deals. Yeah. If you want to transform your physical look, every day you got to go to the gym. And what really helped me, instead of thinking about these things in short terms, oh, I can't wait to see this. I decided I'm a person who goes to the gym every day. And guess what? Because I'm a person that goes to the gym every day, the results are going to come if I want, to, want them to or not. Same thing with business. Same thing with flipping houses. Same thing with real estate. So it's essentially it's all, changing our identity. 100%. Changing your mindset, how you view life. You have to accept the position you're in. You have to accept that life's not fair. And the second you take full responsibility for every single thing in your life, for everything, that's the moment when you start rebuilding. I love that. 
I actually just shared something the other day. It was uh, a gentleman that hopped on the show. His name is Dr. Benjamin Hardy. And, you know, he's been on like the School of Greatness, all, all these, you know, major podcasts. And he shared something and he was like, dude, you know, the, the key to becoming who you want to be is starting to live backwards. And I think that's exactly what you're talking about. Like, you wanted to be that person that was in the gym. So you identified as someone that goes to the gym and then you reverse engineered it from there. Because what is someone that go to, goes to the gym? What do they do? They go to the gym. Exactly. They, you know? <laughs> And that's what Flip Your Life is about. Like one of the core concepts of the book <clears throat> is emulating and enhancing. Here's an example. If there's a 17-year-old kid out there who, who wants to be you know, an athlete in college or a pro athlete, right? Don't, don't wear the jerseys and play the games and watch the games. Go to the, go to the park, practice shooting hoops, go to the gym, eat healthy. So here's an example. If someone's out there and they want to be a real estate investor, this is what the book's about. Don't wonder what to do. Don't ask yourself. Don't try to do it on your own. Don't try to teach yourself. Emulate and enhance. So if you want to be an investor, look at Tarek El Musa. Okay, start up here. How did Tarek get to here? And then reverse engineer how Tarek El Musa got to here and then try to do what I did, but try to do it better. Mm, I love that. Would you agree, knowing what you just said, would you agree that the path is clearer and this is the part that I have a, a hard time conceptualizing, but would you agree the path is clearer for someone to get to the NBA versus get to like high school basketball? And it, it's a silly example, but what I mean by that is you would have to know what trainer would be able to get you to the NBA. You would have to know what the regimen is like, right? Granted, not everyone's going to make the NBA just for that reason, but I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. Well, then, then this is part of the acceptance right? Yeah. Like if I wanted to be an NFL player, well, it doesn't matter how much I work out and how much I practice. I'm probably not going to the NFL I'm too small. <laughs> right. So it's, 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 it's being a realist and, and accepting. And that's a physical thing. Physical has limitations. Mental. I don't think there are limitations and most people get so overwhelmed. I'll give you an example, Matt. Does house flipping seem complex or difficult to you? From someone that hasn't done it to an extent. Yes. All right, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. You tell me if you think you can flip a house. One, do you think you could call people that own houses or people that sell houses and ask them if they have a fixer up or you can buy? Yes. Great. Step two, do you think you can call contractors and ask them to give you uh, quotes to, to let you know how much is it to fix the house? Yeah. Great. Do you think you can call a real estate agent to tell you what it's worth and sell it for you? Yeah. You can flip a house. Simple you see? Yeah. As simple as that. The problem is with all the noise out there, it's so everything is always so overwhelming. So it's important to simplify things in life. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Talk to me about the four step process in the book, because you just started to touch on that. And I want to make sure that we're continuously revolving this conversation around the book. So uh, evaluate, emulate, renovate, duplicate. What does that mean? So evaluate, look at where you are in your life. You got to really look in the mirror, ask yourself who you are. Is this the person I want to be? Is this who I thought I was going to be when I was 12 or 15 or 18? Is this person in the mirror what I expected, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to evaluate your life. Two, you got to emulate, meaning if you want to change, if you want to be different, who out there in the world has done what you want to do at a spectacular level? Not someone that's local in the neighborhood. I'm talking about someone who did something big right? Mm -hmm. The next step of that is getting to work. That's where we renovate, right? So we've already taken responsibility for our situation. We've decided what we want to do. And now we get to work. My big belief is to start with the most important thing is building a routine based on a sleep schedule, right? And then the work starts. If you want to be a real estate investor, well, you got to start taking action and learning how to be a real estate investor. Um, it doesn't matter. It could be anything, right? It's time to start, start time to start getting to work. And then the last one is duplicate. You're out there, you're renovating, you find success. And once you find success, what do you do? You throw gas on the fire and you, you duplicate, you do more of it. And that's how we grow. Mm. This book is a guide for anyone who wants to go from zero to a hundred. That's willing to put in the work to flip their life. I'm curious when we're evaluating and I am so guilty of this in the past and maybe even a little bit in the present. How do we make, how do we make sure that we are being honest with ourselves? 
in the process of evaluation, as opposed to maybe lying to ourselves or brushing things under the rug? What's your policy there? You know, the truth, like that's it. Most people, they, like, like, they lie to themselves because they're believing that second voice. Oh, you have a thyroid problem. That's, that's why you can't lose. No, <laughs> it's not a thyroid problem. How many times you go to the gym in the last month? Well, none. Okay. It's an exercise problem. Oh, um, you know, I can't make any money. Well, what are you doing to make money? Well, nothing. You just, you just got to go. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes down to emulating, you talked about, you know, someone local versus someone big. I'm curious to learn is that does that come down to like shooting too small is, is there ever going too big like talk talk through that a little yeah bit. yeah there is and, and let me let me rephrase that actually so it, it all depends on the individual person sure and and what they want to do you know if, if they want to be a veterinarian then they don't need to go find a world famous veterinarian they need to find a local vet where they take their pets do they like the doctors do they like the displays do you know what i mean they, they need to study so it could be a local level national level Success varies based on what someone wants. Um, but what most people do is, one, they set goals that are way too small. One of Looking back, my biggest problem in my life <clears throat> was my goals early on were way too small. My goal was to sell a bunch of houses. Sell houses, you can only become so successful as a real estate agent, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're always going to go as big as we think. Here's an example. If someone wants to make $100,000 a year, they're going to do things that make $100,000 a year. If someone wants to make a million dollars a year, they're going to do things that make a million dollars a year. If somebody wants to make $10 million a year, they're going to do things that make $10 million a year. So what most people don't get is they're doing things to make a hundred expecting to make 10 million. If you want to make 10 million, you got to do things that make 10 million. Would you say that it's easier to be discouraged on a path of shooting too big from your experience, knowing that you set smaller goals in the past versus what you're doing now? Is it easier for us to be discouraged because it might take longer to hit that bigger goal than the smaller one? It is always going to take way longer than everybody thinks. Always going to take way longer than everybody thinks. And here's the thing about goal setting, right? I don't care how big that goal is. Anybody can have big, big goals. But on the way to that goal, there's going to be maybe 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 micro goals that you need to hit. So instead of always thinking about the big goal, you want to think about that very next goal, accomplish it, go to the next one, accomplish it. Here's an example. I want to be a, a real estate agent. First goal, get my license, bam, done. Now I need to know how to get deals. So then I, I learn how to get deals. Once I figure out how to get deals, you see what I'm saying? So you have to move one goal at a time. A lot of people, they'll start here. They'll skip all their goals and try to get to here. It doesn't happen. It's, it's a process. Yeah. In the process of renovation or renovate, as you frame it, you talked about routine being super important. Why is that so important to you? Like, why is that a cornerstone piece? Because it makes you honest with yourself. Most people, they complain about not having any time. I can dissect their schedule in one minute and show seven hours wasted for the day. Mm. That's it. If it's in writing, if it's in your calendar, there's no excuses about time because it says from 3 to 5 p.m., pick up the phone and make cold calls. Most people, they believe their own BS and their excuses. And, and, and that's one of the things they need to overcome. And they can overcome it by being realistic and putting it on a calendar. If it says 7 a.m., you're going for a run, get up and go for a run. Yeah, for sure. And that goes back to the honesty we were talking about before in, in the evaluation phase. Uh, reminding everyone that the link to the book is in the show notes of this episode. Tarek, I'm going to ask you a couple more questions and I'm going to let you go enjoy your day in New York City. Uh, you brought some good weather with you. I appreciate that because it was absolutely freezing here last week. Uh, this uh, isn't freezing? Uh, better than what we had. That's for damn sure. But um, what's a question you wish more people would ask you? That's good. I mean, people ask me a lot of questions. I don't know. That's a good question. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm honestly, just curious honestly, as a podcaster. I, I would just, I, I would more people like, just ask me anything, to be honest. How yeah. to get started? What should I do? Give me a plan, you know? Like, it's real easy to help people. They just have to allow others to help them. 
Hmm. I got to where I got because I got a lot of help along the way. Yeah. Did you ever find yourself trying to do it by yourself? A hundred percent. And what I learned is this. When you're trying to do it by yourself, you can only go so far. Yeah. There's a limit. There's a cap. And the only way to go further is by not making it about yourself, by making it about people and getting help from people and leading people and motivating people and getting people passionate and becoming a leader. That's how you go far. So it is impossible. Can you become a millionaire or successful doing it by yourself? Yes. Can you become exponentially wealthier? Can you become that much more successful on your own? No. It takes teams and it takes people, which, by the way, is the most difficult part about being an entrepreneur. Because all entrepreneurs, they start off doing everything themselves. And then one day they realize, I can't do it all myself. And then they have to learn a whole new business, which is hiring people. And that's a huge challenge in itself because you're only as good as the people you hire. Right? right. So what I've learned is the most important thing I can do today is spend as much time looking for good people that I would to find a house to flip. Absolutely. How did you let go of control when you started to shift out of doing everything yourself and asking for help, right? Because there's that element that I think people get caught up in, myself included. Yeah. Well, what's interesting about me is, you know, every time I change in my life, it's because I have no other choice. Mm -hmm. I run so hard. I go all in that if I don't change, I, I, I'm going to break. How do we eliminate that aspect of like feeling like we need to control every area of our life, which is why I feel like people don't necessarily ask for help. Got it. Well, I mean, a valuable lesson for me, it was, I was forced to lose control. It wasn't a choice. In 2012, I, I, uh, I started filming TV shows, which means what I'm on camera all day, which means I can't make phone calls. I can't talk to leads. I can't analyze properties. So TV actually took me away from my business, which forced me to learn how to delegate. And that's where I really learned those valuable lessons. I love that. If I knew what you know, or I'll rephrase it, if our community knows what Tarek knows, how would our life be different? If you guys knew what I knew, if you guys just knew that I know you guys can do anything you want, that that's how your life would be different. Like Every single person could go so much further. They can go so much bigger and they can be so much happier than they are today if they get out there and they try and they put together a plan and they execute the plan and they put in the work. And when you think about life, we're here for a really long time. And this isn't something like, you're, you know, you're going to be miserable every day trying to change. No. Most people, they graduate high school, they go to college, they're like this, so excited about life. And then they just stay here for 50, 60 years. Life doesn't end when we're in our early 20s, okay? Life keeps going. So if you're in a shitty spot or you, you just feel like this isn't the life you were expecting, look in the mirror, take responsibility, put in a year of work, go back to that mirror, and trust me, you're going to have a big smile on your face. I love that. Now, Tarek, I'm going to ask you one last question, but before doing so, we're obviously going to have the link to the book in the show notes, socials, websites, anything else that we should let people know about and throw in the show notes. You know, I'm, I'm just passionate about two things in life. One is teaching people how to flip houses, change my life. So I have a company called Homeschooled by Tarek, where I personally coach people and I love it. Um, and then the other thing I'm, I'm really excited about is my company, TEM Capital, which is private equity real estate syndication. What TEM Capital is for people that are in higher income earners that don't have the time to go flip houses and be active. Sure. Well, they can invest with me and partner with me passively. So okay. we buy apartment buildings, self storage facilities and things like that. So I'm just passionate about sharing my love of real estate. Awesome. Do you need to be accredited to be a part of that? Uh, yes. Yes, you do for TEM Capital. So for those that are not accredited, I work with them over at Homeschooled and we work on making them accredited so we can partner on deals. Love that. OK, we're going to make sure that we have those links in there as well. Last question. Tarek makes it to whatever year he wants to live to. He impacts as many lives through schooling and the book and podcasts, TV, all of that good stuff. But you could only be remembered for one piece of advice, meaning someone thinks of your name, this piece of advice is attached to it. What's that advice? Oh, the advice. 
you know, for me, I was I was just hoping, you know, when people think of me when I'm gone, is is that guy Tarek El Musa? He he made the world a better place. Hmm. That, that that's my goal. I want to make this world a better place. I love that, Tarek. This has been an absolute pleasure. Really appreciate the opportunity. Excited to share this with the world to get the book out there some more. So thank you so much for this. You got it. This was a lot of fun, Matt. Thank you.